Take up thy cross, the Saviour said, If thou wouldst my disciple be. Take up thy cross with willing heart, And humbly follow after me. Kreisel, and welcome to our special devotions for Good Friday, where we're going to walk in the way of the cross. Today we're guests of the Capuchin Friars at Pantasaf Friary, and they have here a set of Stations of the Cross which follow the same path as the original Way of the Cross in Jerusalem. Almost a thousand years ago, the Franciscan brothers in Jerusalem designed a path by which pilgrims could walk from the remains of Pilate's palace to the site that was believed to be Calvary. And they designated 14 stations, places where particular events as Jesus carried his cross could be remembered. For nearly a thousand years now, Christians have united themselves with Jesus in his suffering and passion in order to understand more deeply God's love for the world and all humanity. And so I invite you to join on a journey of the way of the cross to make the journey to Calvary where with friends from across the diocese we will be remembering the suffering of Jesus and the 14 stations which lead towards his crucifixion, death and burial. I recognise that we live in a busy and demanding world and it may not be possible for you to do the whole of the way of the cross at one time. So do please feel free to press the pause button to take a break and return as and when you are able. And so I invite you to journey with Jesus as we take up the invitation that he gave to his disciples. If anyone want to become my follower, let them deny themselves, take up their cross and so follow me. We begin our journey as we approach the first station. Jesus is condemned to death. Jesus stands in the most human of places. He has already experienced profound solidarity with so many on this earth by being beaten and tortured. Now he is wrongfully condemned to punishment by death. His commitment to entering our lives completely begins its final steps. He has said yes to God and placed his life in God's hands. As Isaiah prophesied, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, forgive the moments of injustice when we decided to do nothing, the decisive hours when we went with the flow, the crucial days when we refused to take responsibility. O Saviour Christ, save and help those sentenced to death, those unjustly condemned, those persecuted in the pursuit of justice, all prisoners of war and conflict.
Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, with all creation we rejoice in the glory of your death and resurrection. Jesus receives his cross. Jesus is made to carry the cross on which he will die. It represents the weight of all of our crosses. What he must have felt as he first took it upon his shoulders. With each step he enters more deeply into our human experience. He walks in the path of human misery and suffering and experiences its crushing weight. As Isaiah prophesied, he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his wounds we are healed. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, forgive the times we have laid aside the cross, left the path of self-denial, taken our hand from the plough, refused to carry another's burden. O Saviour Christ, save and help those who bear the cross of grievous temptation, who endure the cross of ill-treatment, who live with the cross of anxiety or loneliness. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, with all creation we rejoice in the glory of your death and resurrection. Jesus falls the first time. The weight is unbearable. Jesus falls under it. How could he enter our lives completely without surrendering to the crushing weight of the life of so many on this earth? He lays on the ground and knows the experience of weakness beneath unfair burdens. He feels the powerlessness of wondering if he will ever be able to continue. He is pulled up and made to continue. As Isaiah prophesied, he was despised and rejected by others. A man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised and we held him of no account. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, forgive my turning aside from your needy ones in the street, from your hungry ones in the doorway, from your homeless ones fallen on hard times. O Saviour Christ, save and help those who have lost their footing in life, who have lost contact with family or friends, 
who have been crushed by failure or weakness. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, with all creation, we rejoice in the glory of your death and resurrection. Jesus meets his mother. Jesus' path takes him to a powerful source of his strength to continue. All his life, his mother had taught him the meaning of the words, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Now they look into each other's eyes. How pierced through her heart must be. How pained he must be to see her tears. Now her grace-filled smile blesses his mission and stirs his heart to its depth. Love and trust in God bind them together. As Jeremiah prophesied, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Jesus, forgive the times we've forgotten your mother's love. Failed to give thanks for her obedience. Drawn back from her sorrow. Been unmindful of her prayers. O Saviour Christ, Save and help all who are deprived of a mother's love. Those seeking tenderness. Longing for understanding. Enduring parental pain. Carrying the wounds of a damaged childhood. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, with all creation we rejoice in the glory of your death and resurrection.
Simon of Cyrene helps Jesus to carry the cross. Jesus even experiences our struggle to receive help. He is made to experience the poverty of not being able to carry his burden alone. He enters into the experience of all who must depend upon others to survive. He is deprived of the satisfaction of carrying this burden on his own. As the evangelist Mark records, they compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, forgive the times we have left you to carry your cross alone, refused to share its weight, despised its shame, blunted its message, neglected its grace. O Saviour Christ, save and help those longing to serve you more faithfully, those seeking to love you more deeply, those carrying another's burden more heavily. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, with all creation, we rejoice in the glory of your death and resurrection. Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. Jesus' journey is at times brutal. He has entered into the terrible experiences of rejection and injustice. He has been whipped and beaten. His face shows the sign of his solidarity with all who have ever suffered injustice and vile abusive treatment. He encounters a compassionate, loving disciple who wipes the vulgar spit and mocking blood from his face. On her veil she discovers the image of his face, his gift to her and for us to contemplate forever. As St. Paul declared, it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, forgive our living only with the attractive images of your appearance, our turning away from the true image, the Vera icon, the Veronica, of your torn skin and blood-spattered face. Our reluctance to trace the true likeness of your glory in the bruised and broken. O Saviour Christ, save and help your sisters and brothers where disease has marred their outward beauty. Bless your servants whose vocation is to bathe and wash 
the bodies of others. Strengthen your sisters and brothers whose ministry is to the dying. Lord Jesus, Son of the living God, with all creation we rejoice in the glory of your death and resurrection. Jesus falls a second time. Even with help, Jesus stumbles and falls to the ground. In deep exhaustion, he stares at the earth beneath him. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you will return. He has seen death before. Now he can feel the profound weakness of disability and disease and ageing itself, there on his knees, under the weight of his cross. Isaiah prophesied, Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring, and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, forgive the sins to which we have returned, the sins for which we have made excuses, the sins to which we give an innocent name, the sins you died to overcome, the sins you died to forgive. O Saviour Christ, save and help those living with grave and secret sins, those broken by the discovery of their wrongdoing, those whose sins have wounded another, those whose actions have caused another to stumble. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, with all creation, we rejoice in the glory of your death and resurrection. Jesus comforts the women of Jerusalem. The women of Jerusalem and their children come out to comfort and thank him. They had seen his compassion and welcomed his words of healing and freedom. He had broken all kinds of social and religious conventions to connect with them. Now they are here to support him. He feels their grief. He suffers, knowing he can't remain to help them more in this life. He knows the mystery 
of facing the separation of death. As St Luke records, Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and your children. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Jesus, forgive the cultures of the world for debasing the place of women. Forgive the faiths of the world, denying the calling of women. Forgive the workplaces of the world for devaluing the contribution of women. O Saviour Christ, save and help the women who strive and weep for their communities, the mothers who struggle and shed tears for their families, and the daughters who work and cry for the sick and the dying. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, with all creation we rejoice in the glory of your death and resurrection. Jesus falls a third time. This last fall is devastating. Jesus can barely proceed to the end. Summoning all his remaining strength, supported by his inner trust in God, Jesus collapses under the weight of the cross. His executioners look at him as a broken man, pathetic yet paying a price he deserves. They help him up so he can make it up the hill of crucifixion. As St Paul reminds us, being found in human form, Christ humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, forgive the impossible burdens we place on the shoulders of our politicians and leaders, the unbearable loads we place on the vocations of our pastors and teachers, the crushing weight we place on the skills of our doctors and nurses. O Saviour Christ, save and help those whose strength of body is failing, whose power of mind is diminishing, whose vibrancy of spirit is abating. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, with all creation, we rejoice in the glory of your death and resurrection. Jesus is stripped of his clothes. Part of the indignity is to be crucified naked. Jesus is completely stripped of any pride. The wounds on his back are torn open again. He experiences the ultimate vulnerability of the defenceless. No shield or security protects him. As they stare at him, his eyes turn to heaven. As the psalmist anticipated, 
They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, forgive the times we exposed another to ridicule, disclosed a valued secret, stripped a person of their good name, turned aside from the needs of your naked and emaciated sisters and brothers. O Saviour Christ, save and help those exposed to cold, hunger and homelessness, those terrified of being in the presence of others, those no longer able to hide their weakness, prisoners frightened of re-entering their community. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, with all creation, we rejoice in the glory of your death and resurrection. Jesus is nailed to the cross. Huge nails are hammered through his hands and feet to fix him on the cross. He is bleeding much more seriously now. As the cross is lifted up, the weight of his life hangs on those nails. Every time he struggles to pull himself up to breathe, his ability to cling to life slips away. As Isaiah prophesied, he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and made intercessions for the transgressors. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, forgive the wounds we inflict on those we love, the scars we leave on the memories of colleagues or friends, the hopes we have killed in those who believed and trusted us. O Saviour Christ, save and help those who grieve in silence, who sorrow without words, who bear an inward pain, who are tortured for their convictions. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, with all creation, we rejoice in the glory of your death and resurrection. Jesus dies upon the cross. Between two criminals, a mocking title above his head, with only Mary and John and Mary Magdalene to support him, Jesus surrenders his last breath. Into your hands I commend my spirit. As Isaiah prophesied, he will not grow faint, or be crushed until he has established 
justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, forgive those who crucify you again, those who once died to their sins, but who do so no longer, those who once drank from your cup, but have since betrayed you. O Saviour Christ, save and help those who draw near to the end of life, those fearful of death, those who pass into the presence of God. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, with all creation we rejoice in the glory of your death and resurrection. Jesus is taken down from the cross. What tender morning! Jesus' lifeless body lays in his mother's arms. He has truly died. A profound sacrifice complete. There was a good and righteous man named Joseph from Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. As Isaiah prophesied, He was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, forgive our fearfulness in the mystery of your silence, our fretfulness in the stature of your waiting, and our faithlessness in the surety of your purposes. O Saviour Christ, save and help every mother bereft of a son or daughter, every mourner deprived of a loved one, every person bringing consolation to the dying. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, with all creation we rejoice in the glory of your death and resurrection.
the body of Jesus is laid in the tomb. They take the body of Jesus to its resting place. The huge stone over the tomb is the final sign of the permanence of death. As the evangelist John records, now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified and in the garden was a tomb in which no one had ever been laid. They laid Jesus there. In this final act of surrender, who would have imagined this tomb would soon be empty or that Jesus would show himself alive to his disciples or that they would recognise him in the breaking of bread? We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, forgive us when we have not listened for your voice calling us yet again to follow you, not heard your word raising us once more to the life of faith, not waited even a third time for you ask us if we still love you. O Saviour Christ, save and help every seeker longing for the light that comes after the darkness, every searcher longing for the life that comes through faith, every disciple longing for their Lord in the power of the resurrection. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, with all creation we rejoice in the glory of your death and resurrection. Yes, ye chowdur a bead, tirt atom under the gareth. Ti o'r un un hachib yn helpu. Trwy dy groes a thywyd a berthaist, rwyt wedi rhyddhaid y bobl. Ti o'r un un hachib yn helpu. Pan oeddent ar ddibyn angau, a chi baist dy ddisgyblion. Ti o'r un un cynorthion i. Y mawredd dy rygaredd, Roedd ha ni o'n cadwynau, mae ddau bechodau pawb o'r bobl. Dangos dy hun yn iechawdwr, ac yn achubwr nerthol. Gwared a chymorth ni fel y molwn di. Tyr dynawr a freswylia gyda ni ar glwydd grist iesu. Clyw ein gweddi a bydd gyda ni bob amser. A phan ddeau yn dy ogoniant, gwna ni'n un a thi, fel y rhan o'n fywyd dy deyrnas. Yeah. 
Lord Jesus, who entered into your triumph by the hard and lonely way of the cross, may your courage and loyalty, your unswerving devotion to the Father's will, inspire and strengthen us to tread firmly and with joy the road which love bids us take, even though it may lead us through suffering, misunderstanding and darkness. We ask this for your sake, who for the joy that was set before you endured the cross, despising the shame, and are now seated at the right hand of the throne of God the Father. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this journey around the Stations of the Cross here at Pant Asaph. We finish Good Friday as we leave the lifeless body of Jesus lying in the tomb. However, we know the story doesn't end at this point, and I very much hope that you'll join us over the coming weekend to celebrate the great festival of Easter, where the pain of crucifixion and death is transformed into the joy of new life, with God's saving purposes fulfilled in the resurrection of our Lord. And so now let us go our different ways, seeking for the Lord's blessing and for his gift of peace to go with us. May the Lord Jesus, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you this day and for evermore. Abendeth du hotlach liog, etard, emab, arosbridglan, avo onach plith, ac adrigo gudachwi, on wasnad. Amen. Take up thy cross and follow Christ, nor think till death to lay it down. For 